All right, people, so we're planting some figs today. And I've already put some in the ground here. This is the uh, exposure here that's west, west facing. It's on the west side of the house. This is the afternoon sun right now hitting this the, the side of the house. That's then reflecting off and creating immense amount of heat in this location. Uh, you can see this bed here. This is where the raspberries and blackberries were. We're actually gonna be taking these out and moving them to a different side of the yard. I've already taken down the entire trellis. You can see that over there, along with the wiring. We have our Taramo Unknown here that we planted directly in a raised bed. We didn't bury it one little bit. And it's actually, looks like it's gonna pull through this winter. Um, but yeah, today we are planting a lot of dormant figs in the ground. You can see there's one there. And these are very small trees. One gallon size pots, but they're dormant. That's the key. Um, you can obviously plant non-dormant figs, actively growing figs, but you really should wait to do that after your last frost. Today is March 15th and we're planting out all different kinds of figs here varieties that I think would really do well in this portion of the yard um, that I think can withstand the cold of our climate and we're putting in a couple rows here so we've got some already in the ground along the house and these actually have gotten through the winter time just fine this is Colonel Littman's and that's Ron de Bordeaux so we'll have a nice row of them down here I think somewhere around 12 varieties against the house. And then in this row here, will be another 10 or 11 varieties. And then on this side of the raised bed, will be another 10 or 11 varieties. We're actually taking out the sides of the raised bed, moving the soil around in the raised bed just ever so slightly to smooth it out, make it look like a natural looking berm. We'll add some rocks and different mulches along the berm. And we're gonna move these raspberry plants and the blackberry plants that we've cut back you can't really see them. We're then going to put them over there by the greenhouse in two different rows. We're going to have two rows of blackberries and two rows of, of raspberries. Um, they just do so well here. So that is going to leave us with this giant thermal mass that this berm will create. And then on every side, each side of the berm, I figure it's going to be really great to put a fig tree. So we'll have them actually spaced out about three feet. So three feet this way and three feet going down that way um, you know this is actually quite a good little location here the only problem that we get here is a lot of wind and there was a tree that used to be there next to this giant shade tree and that one they took it down the neighbor and uh, ever since that tree has fallen down or they took it down there's been a lot of wind in this corridor here um, I think it really comes from like over there somewhere and comes in this way. But you know what, the wind's not going to be I think the biggest issue uh, because we're going to use wilt proof like we have in the past and that really helps with desiccation. So it doesn't really make the, the fig trees any colder, it just uh, reduces the heat off of this thermal mass. So the most of the effects if we have a winter windy night that's really cold a lot of that heat that's being generated off the house or off of this thermal mass this mound here will really not do a whole lot but we're pretty safe i think in planting a lot of varieties that i think should survive the winter here and become large trees um, that's the goal you know we do have a nice little experimental plot that we're planting about 18 varieties in Yay over there. Maybe you guys had seen that video. We talked about it in great detail. But uh, today we're just planting out these little ones. And we're also planting out a couple large ones over here. We're going to maybe even put some in the front of the house today if I have time. You can see here, this is Azores Dark. And we had chopped our Azores Dark all the way down to the base. And I took away a lot of the mulch, a lot of that excess soil at the top to expose the trunk and it's very obvious to me even after air layering the entire trunk off of this that this will have no problem re-sprouting from the base hopefully in multiple locations many locations and this tree will be all right 
Um, I'm really excited to get that one in the ground to test its hardiness. I know it's definitely related in some way to a hardy Chicago. This tree here we got is Long D out. It's another one that's really hardy. LSU Champagne is showing some exceptional hardiness as well, different parts of the country. It'll be a good test here in this climate. We have, uh, I think this is Stallion, AKA Blue Celeste. And I think this is a type of Blue Celeste, maybe not the original, maybe not the exact one, but this one certainly is very tasty and I'm really excited to have this particular one. This little guy down here is Negretta. This is a wild fig found in Italy that was introduced to the United States over the years. Really, I think about 10 years ago. This tree down here is uh, an unknown from my buddy Dennis. And uh, I think he's in North Carolina or South Carolina, one of the Carolinas. This one he calls Black Greek. And he says it is very early and it tastes a lot like Black Madeira. Um, so we'll see how well that one does. He also says it's hardy. So going off his judgment, we're going to certainly put this one in the ground. And I've also got this one near the air conditioner units. Um, the air conditioner units put out a lot of dry air and it really dries up the plants around it, which I think would be really great. Cause if I have figs, let's say pretty close to this dry air, I may actually get some dried figs or really will help in aiding that whole drying process probably stopping the splitting process as well so i'm putting more rain sensitive varieties near the air conditioning unit even though i have no idea what the rain resistance is of that particular tree we also have lsu huye this is a variety introduced out of lsu louisiana state university that um, actually has a pretty good flavor and it's really one that's not talked about a whole lot, but it's becoming one that's talked about a whole lot. I think that one has a pretty unique flavor. Um, the only fig I think is quite similar that I've tasted is called Babera Bronca. So, but anyway, I can talk you know endlessly about these. This is Sultane. You know, we're gonna have a lot of varieties here to talk about in the future. Somewhere around 30 varieties just in this location here on this side of the house. So let me get to planting these and just show you guys really the step-by-step. -step. I didn't really dig a big hole. Um, it's not really necessary, especially if you got a smaller tree. What we're gonna be doing is actually planting a lot of these guys above grade. So we'll actually take this guy out a little bit. We've talked about why we're doing that in many videos. It seemed to work out real well, particularly if you look at Taramo Unknown, which is completely above grade, just protected by some soil and the walls of this raised bed, which really isn't much. The soil temperatures, I guess, have have been high enough to keep this thing from taking damage. We'll have to see, obviously, what it does this spring, but uh, that's the goal, is to plant all of my figs above grade, somewhere around four inches, if I can help it, if I have enough soil. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. Put you guys down. You guys should have a pretty decent view there. Yep. So we'll just fill this back in a little bit. I, I guess I went a little too deep with it. And then you can see that it's not really too far above grade. But what I want to do is put the soil high enough so that we're covering these lower buds. By covering those lower buds, we're basically guaranteeing through enough winter protection, right? We're going to put down lots of straw every year to ensure that these fig trees are staying warm at the root level, at the soil level. That stuff really helps insulate the soil, the straw and any other mulch for the, uh, for the most part. So we're gonna add in lots of straw here every single year. And that straw is really gonna help keep the, the soil temperature warm enough to allow us to plant these fig trees a bit higher. Now, if you're getting much colder than I am, this may not be the greatest idea. But actually, this is still not that good enough. We wanna 
add more soil to this location. I want to create a nice little mound. So what will happen is when I take the sides off this raised bed, we're going to add more soil to this. Once we have the appropriate soil level, we're actually going to come in here with rocks. I'm going to get a bag of rocks per tree and put down these pebbles. We'll also have bigger rocks like these. We'll spread them out. Any rocks that I'm digging up and finding will all go on top. The same thing here with this Taramo. All those rocks really help add extra thermal mass, heat up that soil. It's all about getting the soil a bit warmer. And then we're going to plant this one here. Same way we just did the other one. Again, this one is called Stallion. We're going to fill some of this back in here. Put that on top. That's about uh, two inches, I would say, above grade. If I had more soil, which I will, from this raised bed here, we're going to add more soil and really increase the height of this mound. This mound, at, when it's said and done, should be about a foot high. Um, I'm not going to add any mulch just yet. So every tree that I ever plant, we add mulch. This particular tree and all the fig trees, we're going to take away all that mulch for as long as possible. Why are we doing that? Well, because the mulch actually cools the soil. It insulates it and keeps it at a steady temperature, but also cools it down in the springtime. So anything I can do, this one here is Azores Dark, by the way. Anything I can do to increase the soil temperature, I will. Now, once things get pretty warm, we're going to add that mulch layer back on. But early in the spring, it really is a struggle to get these fig trees to grow. So by taking away the mulch early in the spring, you're giving your fig tree a higher metabolism. And when things run in a higher metabolism, they just go nuts. You know, it's like a cold blooded animal. It's like an insect. Obviously there's a limit, right? Certain things can run at certain temperatures, but for the most part, fig trees will not mind about 95 degrees at the soil temperature level. That's pretty difficult to achieve, and especially in the ground. Uh, maybe in a warmer climate, that's very easy to achieve. Here in my climate, I think that's pretty difficult. Once you get over 95 Fahrenheit, that is, the, uh, the root zone will actually stop growing. And your tree will actually stall. Uh, things can obviously get too warm. That's a guarantee. It's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to many of you. It happened to me my first year. And then when I added mulch to the, my pots, this wasn't in the ground, of course. When I did this to my pots, the fig trees started growing again. That mulch really helped cool the soil, conserve that water. In the, in the ground here, we want to have less water and higher temperatures. In your climate, let's say Arizona, California, where it's exceptionally warm, you want that mulch, baby. You want that mulch. <laughs> Somebody quote me on that. You want that mulch, baby. You want that mulch. But anyway, um, you know, it really is depending on the climate. I'm trying to give you guys tips and my rationale here for doing all this stuff as I'm talking about it. Hopefully it's sinking in at this point. We're going to be following along. I think I'm going to do another video here pretty soon. I would imagine with the GoPro planting out a lot of these different figs and I'll show you guys a bird's eye view this time instead of just keeping you guys down there on the ground I think that would be a bit more entertaining 
So we'll put the tag here. The tag's very important here for remembering what the hell this is. Now it's a bit of a problem because uh, we don't have any limbs. <laughs> we don't have any limbs to tie this thing to. So what I'll do is I'll just bury that in the soil and we'll know what it is. But I want to show you guys here what this looks like. We've covered the top. All right, what we're gonna have to do here is that this thing's gonna grow. We're gonna have to add more soil to this. We gotta cover these bottom nodes. This will ensure that this thing keeps coming back every year. It's the same thing with this, this tree right here. We covered all those bottom nodes. We're gonna add more soil, of course, as well. And I may wanna adjust those, to be honest with you. I think they, may, they might be a little too low for my liking. We need to get more soil here, but uh, that's about it. As soon as we're done, as soon as things start growing up here, or uh, growing, and then once we've got the soil out of this raised bed, we're gonna add that soil, we're gonna add these rocks, and then that's it. Sometime around July, we're gonna mulch this whole thing. We're gonna be good to go. So, I wanna show you guys the experimental plot real quick and let you guys go man today was a beautiful day you can see back in here this is the Dalosa we planted a couple months ago or actually I'm sorry today <laughs> but depending on when you guys watch this video uh, it may be a month a month ago so today's March 15th you can figure that out for yourself but uh, yeah, we're planting all the dormant figs out. And we're gonna have two rows in this little section here. We've talked about this, but I'll repeat it, is that we'll have a row here of about eight fig trees and a row here of about eight fig trees. These are gonna be spaced two feet apart. The reason for that is that we really wanna experiment with more varieties. See what will survive. That's really all about this location. Um, some of these I'm gonna plant here for cutting production get more cuttings that way you can even uh, propagate them a lot quicker you can air layer them very easily so you never know this is a nice little propagation bed slash experimental bed it's on a nice little south facing slope the water drains down here we have sun all day that afternoon sun by the way on the west side of the house is really great for inducing fruit. Depending on the color of the sun, as you guys can see, it's a now more orange color. Whereas in the morning, it's more blue, right? It's more of a brighter color. I don't exactly know what color it is that translates to, because it could be our eyes could be giving us a different color versus what is in reality, but uh, the point is the morning sun promotes growth. The afternoon sun promotes flowering. So um, not that one or the other one doesn't promote it at all, but there's more of it in the afternoon that will prom promote that flowering. The fig is an inside out flower. So getting these things to flower, getting them to bolt is really what 